Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing good. As you can see laid out here, I have two of what I consider the most iconic military fighting knives ever made. Um, and we'll get into that. But first, I want to make a correction from my last video of the Frost Canoe. I may have implied, let's slide up there, that all these frost knives were vintage, uh, late 70s, early 80s, and that is wrong. There's at least three of them um, that are readily available to buy now, in case someone wants to buy them. Um, them two Barlows and actually that lock blade. But I'll get into that um, when I continue with the frost series. I want to do this. Because I got the uh, Fairbane Sykes in yesterday. And it is just wicked cool. So I'm going to do a quick video. This is going to be more the show of the show and tell version of these videos. Um, ideally, I would like to make an independent vi video of each one and do a deep dive into the history. But I'll run over a couple talking points on each one. And then we'll just kind of pull them out. Actually, let's pull them out of the sheaths now because they look a lot cooler out of the sheaths. Um, got the Fairbane. Let's do it this way. Fairbane. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. I had the graphics department write up this. I'm assuming that R is silent, but uh, you know what happens when we assume things. So I'm just going to call this the um, F&S and, and this the K-Bar. So let's first go over the K-Bar. This was first manufactured in 1943 by Camillus. And it was also made by Union Cutlery Company, which ended up uh, changing its name to K-Bar Cutlery. Um, and also Pale Cutlery, Cutlery made some. They... Had, uh, the government had all three um, chipping in and making them because they needed so many for the uh, war effort, World War II. And the, the handle is 5 inches long and the blade is 7 inches long. Um, these are leather stacked rings and it's like an epoxy that fills it. Um... 1095 carbon steel that's coated. I'm not sure what the material is that they coat it with, but that's to um, prevent corrosion. So that's a quick rundown on that. Um, for the FNS, these were first manufactured in 1941 by the Wilkinson Sword Company. And I just seen an original. These are both reproductions, by the way. I, I seen a um, original Wilkinson go on e sell on eBay for over four hundred dollars, and it wasn't in very good condition. So as a collector, I don't mind getting the reproductions. They're a lot cleaner, and you know they look more like collector pieces this way. If you're really deep into it and you feel you need to buy an original. Um, you're going to have to dig deep in your wallet on either one, actually. But um, now the FNS, that also has a 7 inch blade um, of 0 1 tool steel. This is made by J. Uh, J. Noel and Sons in Sheffield, England. And the handle is cast aluminum. I'm not sure if that's exactly how they made it in 1941. I know the K-Bar is pretty much made exactly the same way as they were intended in 1943. Um, I'll have to do a deeper dive on this. But when I do a video on each one independently, I'll get all them facts down straight. Right now I'm just going off the top of my head. Um, I will leave a link in the description box on a brief history of this uh, awesome dagger. And it's it's pretty go cool, uh, pretty cool. It goes into um, Mr. Fairbain's thinking when he was designing this, because um, he actually teamed up with his buddy uh, Sykes, 
who were both in the Shanghai police force. And Fairbain got jumped and stabbed 12 times and left for dead. So after he recovered, he figured he better design something that could um, protect him in a self-defense mode. And he also came up with a fighting style called Defendu that he named. And that was a mixture of uh, jiu-jitsu, uh, judo, boxing, and wrestling, and what they called uh, bone setting, which is just a polite term for bone breaking. So, but that's all in the article. Um, check the link. You'll, you, you'll really like it. I enjoyed the read. But let's take a look at um, the Fairbane, because that's the one I just got, and this is what the title is, um, you'll see they put the maker on the guard here. There we go, J. Noel and Sons, Sheffield, England. And then on this side of the guard, they have two symbols. And if it was issued for military use, there would be a number next to the arrow, and there would also be a number up on the handle here somewhere. And that would show that it was actually issued for service. And of course, because this is a reproduction, you're not going to get that. You're going to see the diameter of the handle for the FNS is much smaller than the diameter handle on the um, K bar. But with this ribbed handle, they call it a ringed handle. There's actually three different versions of handles that you can get. But this is the closest to, to the original that uh, Wilkinson made. But you can see that it you can get a good grip on it. I'm not sure. Did I say this is cast aluminum? I know I told you this is 01 tool steel. And it's uh, blued. Like you would blue a... Um, and you can see that it's not coated. It's a... Bluing is a process that they use to prevent corrosion, and they use it mainly on gun barrels and um, gun parts. So it's got a really nice sheen to it, and the um, light is not really showing the bluing effect, but that's how they prevent the corrosion on these. You can also buy these with a, um, a non-blued uh, blade. And it would just be the silver with the black, but I thought the black looked better. And this was the only one they had. I got this um, from an American dealer uh, for $75 shipped to the door. You can buy these pretty much at any knife shop in, um, in the UK. I know for sure Sheffield made. Um, Sheffieldmade.com sells them for like 70 pounds. But then you'll have to pay the um, international shipping. and But that it's still worth it. It's still well worth it for a repo. Because like I said, if you try looking for an original, you're going to get into the two, three hundred, four hundred dollars $400. So I got this for $75. That's why I couldn't pass it up. Um, and it was the last one. And I, I'm glad it had the ringed handle which is closest to the original. And I did test it out. I stabbed it into a couple boxes and it went in like butter. And you will see that uh, on reviews of these, people complain that, well, you know, the edges, they're all blunt, but it's a thrust weapon. And I mean, there's still an edge on here, but there, there's an, it wasn't made to have an edge on there. It's just supposed to have a nice pointy tip for piercing. I'm, You know, some of the soldiers probably did um, sharpen them down, but they were issued this way. So, yeah, the British commandos, they were, um, this is what they used. They were trained in Defendu, which is pretty much a badass ass-kicking uh, um, fighting style. They called it uh, gutter fighting. <laughs> and um, it's pretty much uh, kind of kill or be killed style of fighting. I mean, you break, you could break their wrists. They're trained in the breaking the wrist, their neck, uh, their kneecaps, 
throwing them down on the ground, and then eventually pulling this out. A lot of the uh, commandos, I'll show you the sheath. A lot of the commandos put these, even though they have a belt loop here, they stitched it down on their calf. So this was down towards their ankle, and this was sewn. Um, the, the original sheaths had um, no holes here. They were just flat and they would stitch it to their pant leg. And you could either wear it up high around the belt, or you could stitch it up here and down here, and kind of like a in between a boot knife and a side carry. And a lot of them did that. So when they were fighting and you were down in a crouched position, you could pull it out and finish the job. Yeah, I know, kind of brutal, but uh, it was warfare. And this is made out of leather. The tip is steel. Not sure what kind, but it's all leather. And you will hear a lot of complaints that, oh, it's, you know, shoddily made. But um, it's close to original, as is the Mark II. It's, you know, it's not exactly original, but if you look at the old ones, it, they're not that much different. They were, they're probably made to last more back then because, you know, you had rain and mud and everything else. And these were just made to be um, collector pieces, I guess. I'm sure people use them for more than collecting because um, if you wanted them for home defense, they will both do the job, that's for sure. But anyway, there's a good look at it. Um, this here is 10 and a half ounces, so it's a little heavier, and this is seven and a half ounces. Both seven inch blades, a little shorter, smaller handle, um, cast aluminum, uh, leather wrapped, coated, and blued. But, um, and th this was designed, the K bar was designed more as a trench knife, a a fighting utility knife and you'll hear, hear stories how people you know did a lot of digging and opening cans and all kinds of um, different stuff with this um, pretty much this was just made for one thing and that was sliding in between the ribs and piercing the heart or um, puncturing a thigh or um, punk, uh, <laughs> sticking it in the side of the neck but, um, yeah, that's it. Those, those, to me, are the two iconic fighting knives ever made. So that's why I finally got both of them. So, my friends, we'll leave it at that until I do a deeper dive. And we'll do, um, I'll do videos on each one independently. But until then, I just wanted to show you this awesome dagger and let's close it out with a good look here hold her nice and steady tell me what you guys think until next time take care peace bye bye